This episode of Cognitive Dissonance is brought to you by our patrons. You fucking rock. Greetings, citizens. I was wondering if you'd be willing to take one last poll for 2016. Would you describe your behavior in the past month more like number one? You've run around naked, except for an orange hunting vest, randomly discharging a shotgun in any direction and shouting, America! Or, number two, about every hour or so you throw up a little bit in your mouth. Mm. Glory hole, motherfuckers. We need your humor more than ever. Uh, hi, Tom and Cecil. This is, uh, Rose from, uh, from California. And I just, I just need to, to, to tell everybody that this, the so-called code of pizza and hot dogs, meaning all this stuff, um, that, that, that Pizzagate people are referring to. Uh, so a lot of these Pizzagate people, like originally they started out on 4chan and Reddit. And on 4chan, uh, they have, basically their only rule is that you can't post child pornography or talk about child pornography or you'll be banned. So uh, they developed a thing where instead of saying child pornography, they would say CP. And then instead of CP, they would say uh cheese pizza and then that's pizza so then on 4chan uh talking about pizza meant that you would you were actually talking about child pornography uh so to re and these are the same people uh that are now accusing uh john podesta and everybody else of being involved in this so basically to, to recap all that what that means is that the only reason that they think that pizza is a code word for uh, child pornography is because they themselves are pedophiles. They made this up and they think that everybody else is. It's total projection. Uh, thanks, Glory Hole. Be advised that this show is not for children, the faint of heart, or the easily offended. The explicit tag is there for a reason. Recording live from Glory Hole Studios in Chicago, this is Cognitive Dissonance. Every episode we blast anyone who gets in our way, we bring critical thinking, skepticism, and irreverence to any topic that makes the news, makes it big, or makes us mad. It's my new thing. It's skeptical. (laughs) It's political. And there is no welcome at this is episode 332 of Cognitive Dissonance. You're nodding. You're nodding very approvingly. I'm happy that there. you remembered it. I'm it's right on the notes. I, okay, uh, yeah, that's fair. Nailed it. Uh, I read it on the notes. <laughs> <laughs> and we are joined this episode by Thomas from <sighs> <laughs> Opening Arguments, Atheistically Speaking, Comedy Shoe Shine, and Thomas in the Bible. Sometimes, but now it's over. But maybe it'll come back in a different format. <laughs> How'd I do? But yeah, no, I, that's you did get pretty much all of them there. I would say I was gonna say I was gonna stop you and say let's just send like a zip file to all your listeners. Just it <laughs> contains the list of all the podcasts. No, we, we just like to make them. Sure. We we like yeah. them. We wouldn't want to. <laughs> <laughs> the most prolific man in podcasting, I think, right here on the show. I couldn't believe he had time for it. He had his three hundredth episode of Athe- atheistically speaking very recently. So congratulations yeah. on that. You had us on that show thank as well you. as uh, several other people. We were on three oh two, I think. We didn't make, yeah, we didn't make yeah, the cut thank for three hundred. I know, I yeah. know it's the and, same and thing. I wanna I wanna congratulate you guys on getting an intern who just the only job is to make sure Tom gets the episode number right. I'm pretty sure that's <laughs> her entire <laughs> job description. That's not <laughs> her only do job. Anything else. <laughs> yeah. yeah, her other job is ordering Reese's pieces for the fucking studio. <laughs> which, which is really something we ever do. Yeah. Like, yeah, can, can, you, 
it's, it's yeah. the best. Like, like, hey, can you make sure uh, we have a Reese's Pieces jar filled? <laughs> <laughs> and, she's like, and she's like, yeah, I'll order it after I get done eating this gun. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> yeah. I'm glad you guys have no dignity either. You don't even care. You're like, hey, yeah, let's face it. No, uh, no. We it, need this fucking Reese's Pieces jar full. We don't even care that we're asking Yeah, we're going to ask her to set up IVs next week. Are you kidding me? <laughs> yeah. We had a whole conversation about whether or not if you ate M&M's <laughs> and Reese's Pieces, would it taste like a peanut butter cup? The only way to solve that was yeah, to do the research. We had to do it by science. And of course, she didn't order just like three bags. She ordered, she ordered, she ordered giant fucking like like three pound like bags. family size. Bags. Hey, I love it. That's a go getter. Oh, yeah. I'm looking right it. now. It's a 48 ounce bag. We have fucking six pounds of candy in here. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing. So, uh, yeah, so, what we had, I've yeah. eaten most no, of it. No, there's I've a lot of it's gone. Yeah. So, it, so yeah. what you're saying is it sounds like she sized you up properly yeah. and did yeah. about her, an accurate job. Her first comment after going through our email for a week was, God, you guys get a lot of food from Grub <laughs> <laughs> I felt judged yeah, and yeah. then hungry. And then, uh. and then we ordered. Yeah, so. yeah. So but, 300, uh, 300 episodes of Atheistically Speaking, before we get into uh, any of the other stuff we wanted to talk about, um, 300 episodes, what has been uh, for that one of your highlights of that show? I mean, you've had so many different people on and you've had, like, has there been one show that really sticks out in your mind that you're like, wow, I, I, I can't <laughs> believe that this one got made or, you know, this was this was really an amazing moment that I had in this, you know, 300 plus <laughs> hours worth of stuff that you've put out. You know what you're trying to get me to say. You know what you're trying to get me to say. Uh, I, I did <laughs> get in there. No, I don't. Yeah, Wait. You're fishing for a compliment. I'm not fishing. I know I'm not that. No, 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 I'm not I, well, that was my hey, first thought. Cecil, my first you're thought a very was pretty these, girl. I'm not you're a very pretty girl. <laughs> I'm, I am growing my hair out. So. <laughs> and then I realized that the only thing I could possibly say is that the Smalley episode <laughs> launched me so much further in my podcasting career. Like, I'm not even making that up. I, I didn't even, like, we were, I was talking to you guys before that aired, and we were like, God, should I even post this? Yeah, like, I, I said no. Yeah, like, I yeah. said no, too. Yeah, I think yeah. we you both guys said, And you no. almost convinced me. Yeah. And I, and, I think I and called you're right, you at like, home in a panic, like, don't mm-hmm. do it, buddy, don't do it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I was like, man, I just, uh, I think I, I, I guess I'll do it. And I posted it, and like, everything took off. It's, this is proof that hilarious. nobody should take my advice. Yeah. Right? Oh, That's true. what that is. Yeah. I mean, I already knew that. So that was when I was like, okay, I need to post this. That's my heart. I was I was actually hoping you were going to say your guest edited episode was your best oh, episode yeah. ever. I, uh, uh, one of the best highlights is you sending me a file <laughs> like an email saying here's part two that I salvaged for the. So what happened to set it up for anyone who doesn't know is Cecil guest edited a disaster of a conversation. <laughs> It was a fucking and train here's the thing. Wreck. I'm going part of. Uh, so I recently announced that I'm going full time podcasting. And the reason is, is I'm having like nervous breakdowns. I can't even do all the work anymore. I just I cannot keep up with the work. You should and get so an assistant. In the middle, yeah, if I have one. I still <laughs> no, can't. Could you imagine much. without Haley how bad this would be? So I, uh, I, I was like, I don't know if I'm going to air this, but I don't have time to like not re- use this two hour fucking recording. And so Cecil, out of the kindness of his heart was like, you know what, let me try to edit it for you. And I was like, that is the nicest thing anyone's ever done for me, including all my, my parents. Everything my parents <laughs> ever did for me was not as nice as that. And I said, thank you, because I don't even know that I can do this. Like, I can't get everything done. And so he does. He, he, get, he does. Cecil does a part one. And he's like, yeah, I think, th- I think this is pretty good. I think this will work. And I, I was like, okay, I'm just going to fucking air it. I didn't even listen to it. I was like, I trust you. I'm going to air I'm it. I'm glad you trusted me. Why? You didn't even yeah, listen exactly. to it? Wow. You I didn't, I didn't listen it? to it ahead of time. No, oh, I couldn't. I literally changed couldn't. it. I, God. I could have I could have almost certainly made it say Eli say I like butt sex. I guarantee <laughs> if you give me enough time and enough tape. Well, actually, all I need is like 30 seconds of Eli yeah. saying that. But, yeah. I wish you would have. It would have it would have gone. But then the fu- here's the so here's the punchline of this story. That is so fucking funny. Is that uh, a later email you sent, uh, Cecil? It said, uh, "Here's what I could salvage from part two. Now, keep in mind, I'm I'm like in and out of the goddamn hospital. No, not really, but I'm I'm like just cannot manage it right now. I cannot get enough fucking done in enough time. And so I see that email and I think, okay, he found a part two. <laughs> he got a part two out of this recording. And so on that part one, I announced to everybody, I'm like, hey, uh, Cecil tells me he got a part two. Out of this terrible recording, it was just a big argument. Like it was just awful for anyone who hasn't yeah. heard it. it was oh, it's terrible. totally worth yeah. listening yeah. to, but it was awful. It was, I don't know what the so, best thing yeah. you've ever done is, but I know what the worst thing <laughs> you've ever done. Is. 
Yeah, that's accurate. Okay. So, <laughs> so I tell them, and, and I tell the audience, because I'm an, I can't help but be an honest guy. I cannot help. That is my, my, I just have to be. I told the audience, like, I'm not even sure you want to hear this. Like, I really don't know. But Cecil says there's a part two. If enough people say they want to hear part two, fuck it, I'll post it. And that's, that's what I said to my audience. And so everyone was saying, it was like five to one in favor. And, and I get a text from Cecil <laughs> saying, dude, did you, did you listen to what I sent you? And, I and said, you're like, I didn't even no, listen to man, the thing I, that you edited that I posted I, exactly. as a show. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I, I was like, no, man, I, I just don't have time. You have no idea how fucking, like, I can't with work and all this stuff. I just like, don't have time. He's like, you need to listen to it. <laughs> so I go check it out. <laughs> and it's just a, like, a minute long clip of all the shitty noises <laughs> that he picked out of the recording. <laughs> and he said it wasn't salvageable. So I, this whole time, I was thinking there was going to be this great part two that Cecil had salvaged. <laughs> and it was just a total fucking joke that he played on me that I didn't uh, read because I didn't have time. I'm and I announced that it was, oh, uh, it was so good. I'm so the sorry. best part is when somebody blows their nose into the I microphone. <laughs> you guys are having a conversation. <laughs> Like right yeah. into the microphone. My favorite part is that the, I kept the actual reaction, which was yeah. which was, was mine, Thomas yeah. going, "The fuck was that?" Like, <laughs> yeah. like there's this, and no one answered yeah, me. This beautiful I moment said, where somebody what goes, "The fuck was that?" and no one answered. Like, <laughs> the, right into the microphone, and you're like, "What the fuck was that?" Oh, they're like cleaning out their spit oh, valves with their so fucking funny. tuba. And then like someone whatever. is fucking reassembling an M16 the entire time. <laughs> like, like, oh. That is one of. But I will say it is fresh just on my mind of course but literally Cecil so that is one of the funniest things to happen on all of my 300 <laughs> episodes was me promising this part too well it is a humorless show oh you, be nice I don't know how to do that Gosh. so we're having a good time and Tom ruins it I get it so we, we're all we're all you know Pretty we're all much friends we're all like hey we're joking yeah, just ask his thing. marriage oh you can't Ooh. ask my marriage it's not there anymore <laughs> <laughs> So to talk about this story from NBCNews.com, women's groups challenge new Texas abortion restrictions. Um, so there's a new law that's taking effect December the 19th, um, which is going to require that embryonic and fetal tissue resulting from abortions, um, also from miscarriages, um, must be buried or cremated regardless of a woman's uh, religious beliefs or personal wishes. It's that, just that is that is actually the second draft of the law. I want to read a couple of things that were in the original law. OK, so this All is right. this was originally what was there. Of course, you had to actually buy the fetus a season pass to a water park. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then you had to call up and have an awkward conversation if you see if you could get a partial refund. You know, that is <laughs> when they're on there, the laziest river. <laughs> <laughs> also within the law was something that said you had to fully furnish its room and then put up a post that you're giving it all away on free cycle. <laughs> there's, so a picture, <laughs> there's, a, there's a picture of the baby on the wall of the room and it's just like hanging from a branch. It's just says, hanging, <laughs> hanging there. And it's all, Actually, forget it. <laughs> just, uh, yeah. And then the final thing that was in, originally in the law was um, you had to say the following sentence to your parents. We're expecting oh God. to get an abortion. <laughs> <laughs> so you had to do all three of those things. They took all that out, but now you just have to bury it. So that's, uh, yeah. At least you just have to bury it now right. instead of those yeah. things. Or those awful things. You get, you get choices. Yeah. You can, you know, especially yeah, like. I mean, because, you know, the thing is, like, if you have to buy it a car seat and then you sell that car seat, <laughs> that's a lot of money. You're not you, supposed to resell car seats. And yeah. you're never yeah. going to get the same amount of money on I know. You know what I, I know. Mean? It's fucking. So, yeah, I think you also have to start all of its uh, social media accounts and like get that going. <laughs> you have to tweet one tweet yeah. as as your, as your, your dead fetus. Dead yeah. <laughs> yeah. You have to tweet out the uh, the ultrasound and then tweet another tweet out of you burning the ultrasound. <laughs> <laughs> if you get an abortion early enough and you have to cremate it, it's just like it's like, yeah, it's, like it's like a cigarette. <laughs> It's like, it's like, a, like if you get yeah, one, you like just seven use that weeks. little thing in your car, right? Like that you little, can like fit that in a one hitter. <laughs> in a one hitter. I'm gonna vape this baby. <laughs> oh my god, that's just. I, I, what do you choose? How do you choose bury it? Is it like, is it like a micro cache then? Like you bury it and just sit the oh, no. in like a little. <laughs> it's like a little film jar. I mean, really, the things you made up are not more ridiculous than the actual law. Right. I know. <laughs> I know. They're, that's that's borderline the thing. similar. It yeah. says the uh, 
uh, I'm going to quote a piece from the bottom. It says, a rape victim said requiring her to bury the fetus would be would amount to the state of Texas rubbing my face in my own rape. But another woman said burying the fetus after a miscarriage gave her a sense of peace. And the thing is, is nothing is stopping that one woman from burying. I know. There's right. no, I mean, there's a, yeah, but it's instead. It's almost like it should be your choice right. whether you want to fucking do that or yeah, not. Yeah, like instead so. you basically have to say like, look, you know, we're going to make this a mandate so we can have half of the women or part of the women resent this. And right. it's like you're making yeah. a law yeah. specifically so people would resent it instead of having it be, like this woman said, a beautiful thing that helped her get past or grow with the grief. Like the, nothing stops you from doing that. Well, Thomas yeah. appears to be uh, espousing some kind of uh, like choice related, like almost like a pro-choice. <laughs> yeah, it's weird when you see huh. a, a sentence like you just read, a couple sentences where one person said this would be horrible, another person said this was fine. It's almost like if there's some way the people who think it would be fine could choose to do it, <laughs> and the people who think it's horrible could choose not to do it. Gosh, if only there was some way. No, did they have? I, obviously, you, I, I know that every bill gets like a you know like a house bill or you know name and a number and whatever. Do they? Is there a colloquial name for this? Is this like the uh, abortion shame law or the um, totes sad <laughs> waste times of fucking law? time law? Well, yeah. Shoebox sized coffin law. Right? It, like you have to treat <laughs> yeah. it like like a like the goldfish that died. Like you <laughs> can like how formal does the funeral have to be or the yeah. burial? Can you do a burial at sea yeah, and flush exactly. it? Yeah, down the toilet. It, like, yeah. As long as you play taps, I right? think you. I can. mean, because really, yeah. we did it to a, uh, a Bin Laden. Yeah, right. <laughs> That's true. We did. We it did. To, if it's good enough for Bin yeah. Laden, it's good yeah. enough for my corpsey <laughs> penis. <laughs> Corpse so here's fetus. what I want to. <laughs> Jesus Christ! Jesus. I'm gonna start. You're gonna have to start that uh, Twitter account, Corpsey, and then start tweeting from oh it. Oh my and god! Then, like, you have to oh my god! It. That'd be an amazing Twitter. It's account. like you've got like you go in the backyard. It's like it's like there's like a gravestone for like the cat, the hamster, and then, like it's like, aborted. <laughs> and then it says aborted the next Timmy. headstone says like some tissue is what it says. <laughs> like yeah. yeah. The state made me do Just this. Just abbreviated to S say? tissue. Right. Are you gonna, oh, wait a minute. We got to start burying our tissues because, yeah. uh-oh. Uh, I'm going to need a bigger yard. <laughs> Tom's going to need a landfill-sized plot. <laughs> Again, I've given all those a burial at sea, so it's good. Uh, but here's where I want to plug opening arguments because I find this so fascinating. Now that I've been learning so fucking much from Andrew Torres over on, on opening arguments, now I want to ask you guys, what do you think? I'm, I'm going to pull on Andrew because he does this to me. What, do you think this is constitutional? Tell me what you think. I'm not familiar enough with Roe versus Wade to know whether or not it would go against that. But part of my my thought would be it doesn't sound constitutional because um, you're putting some sort of there's some sort of restriction on abortion. And it feels like mm. it's not constitutional to me. It, it feels non-constitutional to me for for other reasons. Like if if a if a person had a religious belief, for example, that precluded them from doing this, then right, like the, right. so the burial rights, burial rights, whether you engage in them or don't engage in them, have always been up to the individual, and they've been protected, I thought, by your your right to religious liberty. So I would think you could be challenged on Yeah, there's grounds. another. Yeah, that's, that's a good point. Interesting. Those are interesting answers. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to tell you what I think, but I'm not a fucking lawyer. So uh, <laughs> so why do we care? What you so, so I'm going to tell you my guess. And then if you want to check out these two fuckers you're listening to and I and Andrew Torres on a future episode of Opening Arguments, we're actually going to talk about it. And Andrew will give us the right answer. But here's my guess from all that I've learned. Uh, and I've learned a lot. I've learned enough to where I can say a statement that's, God, it could be upwards of 60% correct. Can you imagine? <laughs> what, did you get it from a yik like, yak? I, yeah, yeah. I could, I could say legal things. Like before, Come on, I just, if someone aren't that correct. <laughs> Let's be honest. Before, if someone asked me a question about this, I would be like, I, Roe Ro v. Wade? Uh, uh, you know, like just nothing. There's absolutely nothing. Now I can say a statement that I think is going to be like, you know, somewhere in the neighborhood of true. But based on so what I've learned from Andrew is that Roe v. Wade set up a trimester approach. And then this later case, I think it was like Planned Parenthood v. Casey, set up this uh, standard where viability, post viability, it was OK for states to completely outlaw abortion. But before viability, they can't put an undue burden on it. And that's the key word. I actually think this will end up being constitutional uh, or it could because – the case you would have to make is, does this put an undue burden on the woman to get an abortion in the first place? And my guess would be 
that if they, I don't know, if the state like incentivizes the fucking funeral homes that are having to do this procedure or whatever, you know, this process of cremation or burial or whatever, if the state like incentivizes that or gets someone else to pay for it and doesn't put an undue burden on the woman, I actually think it'll stand up. But it's a really interesting issue because it comes along the lines of all these fucking bills that now that Republicans try to push through that they, they know they can't outlaw abortion. They're just going to make it as annoying as fucking possible with all this stuff you have to do yeah. and these hoops you have to jump through. You have to read like a comic uh, that, that tos- tells you how bad you are for murdering your child. And like you have to do all this shit that, well, like, well, it's not an undue burden, yeah. but, uh, but you know, and it just barely squeezes through. You have to write a heartfelt letter to your fetus. Right. Yeah. 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 You, know? yeah. you know, for the it's burial stupid. thing, though, like, I mean, burials are not free they're not they're not inexpensive yeah. like do you get a discount heard, by the pound well it said it said right. in here it said um <laughs> <laughs> thank you took a second depends i mean it depends <laughs> on if you're going to use the vacuum sealer or not. right you know what i mean like i, I guess but uh but it's, can you do it in bulk can you can we just <laughs> you gotta can go, we to go Costco? can we go like <laughs> ferrets on the rainbow bridge just chuck a <laughs> put a dozen or so <laughs> <That's> <laughs> in the <laughs> You remember the movie? I remember, remember that parrot documentary. That was awesome. I think they're just going to need to pair it with somebody else who needs to get cremated anyway. Like they're like, okay, yeah, like they from can now hold on, them everyone under their arm like dies, a duck or something. <laughs> yeah, every old, this is every like your grandpa who dies, like they get to get cremated with a buddy. Yeah, you know, and then they have like a little. Can you get a like, punch like card? They, like if you if yeah, you abort like, six, <laughs> the seventh one is free. <laughs> you get a free latte. <laughs> <laughs> The funny thing is, though, I actually did hear, uh, I think on the radio, on NPR, a uh, funeral home director was like, we can't fucking do this. Like, this is going to be ridiculous. Like, we're going to have to add all this. They're not going to. So unless the state pays for it, you know, they're going to just be ex- uh, expected yeah. to absorb all this cost yeah. because it's not free. Like, there's there's shit they have to do. There's procedures they have to, like, you know, you there, to there's rules it? they have to follow. Like, it's like the size of, like, a thimble. Like, you've got I know, an embalm it's it? crazy. Well, and they also said that. This is going to apply to miscarriages, too. I saw that. Unless you miscarry Unless, at home. Yeah, but I think that they're probably just going to give you a state-supplied strainer that you can fish <laughs> it out of the, out of the toilet. <laughs> so. It's in the shape of Texas. It's like The strainer's it's in a, the shape yeah, of Texas. It's a, and, it, and it's like a minnow net. You know <laughs> it's like I mean? the it's low just... star of fucking miscarriage strainer. <laughs> Oh my God. If they did that, there's no way. If I were a woman, if this, if that law passed and I were a woman, there's no way I would not send them a bag of my own shit. Like there is no <laughs> way. I would say, hey, you want it? Oh, I miscarried. Here you go. I saved it. I saved it for you guys. Here you go. Do it. Do it. Your burial ceremony. I saved ceremony. it. Looks like a Texan. I miscarried yeah. a food baby. Yeah. <laughs> I carry every one of those to term. <laughs> I don't want to get into the debate about the climate change, but I will just simply point out that I think in academia we all agree that the, the, the temperature on Mars is exactly as it is here. Uh, nobody will dispute that, yet there are no coal mines on Mars. There's no factories on Mars that, that, that I'm aware of. Um, this one comes from The Independent. Sci- fucking shit. Scientists are frantically copying U.S. climate data, fearing it might vanish under Trump. Precautionary measure involves independent servers to house mountains of data. Just just the fact that scientists that are working on climate change, one of the most pressing problems that globally um, all of humanity faces right now, the, the very fact that this guy's election causes them so much concern and worry and fear that they're not even convinced that their data will yeah. survive. Yeah, you know, and, I, and at first I thought like that's crazy. Like no one's going to go in and delete the data. And then I, and then I got to thinking a little bit. Well, I think that's right. I don't think anyone's going to go in and delete the data. But what I, I I could see easily happening is something just gets defunded, and then that data sits on a server that somebody just unplugs. Yeah, and it goes away. Yeah, right. It goes away. Like I have. I was thinking of my work. Right. So I have. <clears throat> astronomical amounts of data. Um, but if somebody just came in and said, okay, right now, if somebody walked in my door and said, okay, everybody here is fired, we're defunding the whole thing, and they walk over to my server and unplug it, and then it just gets fucking recycled, all that data is just gone. Yeah. Right? So if we don't, it's not that somebody's going to come in and be like, erase the climate data. 
But what they could do is just just stop valuing it. Yeah. Stop value it and don't value the data, don't value the science. And then who's going to save it? It's like you're going to. It's like the last scientist to leave the building puts the data in their pocket. Yeah. You, right. Uh, hold on, I have to get my 20 terabyte hard drive out. Right. Exactly. And put it somewhere. You know, even more than that, I'm yeah. sure. But the or they thing, get a they get a job in the big yeah. data field. Yeah. You know, like big climate. <laughs> like well, you're not. You're not getting. Uh, you're right. It's just this this idea that that first off they don't they don't respect that data. Yeah, right. That's right. the main thing that they don't respect it. So they're not going to create any policies that that follow what is a consensus of scientists at this point. You know, a you have massive you have consensus. outliers. You have yeah, outliers. Right. But again, you know, you start looking back at some of these outliers, and then you're like, oh yeah, they're paid for by this guy. You know, right. like, it's it's pretty. There's some pretty obvious connections, uh-huh. and so. It's not a it's not a shock to anybody who follows this stuff that this stuff is real. And then when you start talking to people outside that don't think it's real, I'm just I'm always blown away. But now we have a president or soon to be have a president that is that does this. That's that's going to just ignore yeah. this data. The, the minority president elect Donald Trump has come out and said, yeah, I mean, he's come out and, and said that he's skeptical. Nobody knows. Yeah. You know, this is this this is information that's up in the air. No, it's not. He's skeptical of this, but he's perfectly he has a. 100% positive that 3 million illegals voted, right? Yeah, right. Yeah, it, come on. This is a guy who does not vet his information. He gets he does he does what is good for yep. Donald Trump. Exactly. I mean, this is obvious. Right. This is There's you can't you can't saying, argue yeah. with this, right. right? You can't you can't send me a message and be like, "No, I really do think." No, he's arguing his best interest in this stuff. He's doing for it with sure. every single thing he has. And only his best yeah. interest. And it's only been his best interest since he's taken yeah. office. Because he's an asshole. Yeah. No, and don't and, and and there's and there's no argument against that. Look no. at what he's done. Now, that may benefit you. That may be the thing that benefits you, and that's fine. However, that works. But that's a side benefit. But that's a side. He yeah. he doesn't have you in mind. Yeah, yeah. The thing is that like Donald Trump is the pill, and side effects may include yeah, exactly right. Yeah, that, that that some white people are happy. Yeah, that's like side effects may include feelings of joy by entitled white people. Sure, like, by that's people it, who, right? who have a lot of money. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I don't know exactly what it is or what it's doing, but this is not human intelligence. Okay. It's not human intelligence. So this story comes from Right Wing Watch. This is Alex Jones. Uh, Hillary Clinton has personally murdered and chopped up and raped children. So this is a quote, right? Alex Jones, quote, Hillary Clinton has personally murdered and chopped up and raped children. And I thought, that is the wrong order. I know. That is the oh, right. Just- that's, gr- I mean, like, look, this whole thing is gross. Yeah. But that is just the absolute wrong order. It's like, it's this. like, it's like searing. Your braise, then <laughs> cutting it, and then putting it back in the pan. You're like, what are you just, doing? What you, you've got what this you whole process all mixed up. It's if like you're going to rape the kids, gonna... don't do it when they're all chopped up into bits and bobs. Well, you know, mm-hmm. there's there's a lot less screaming then. I know, but you can't see the fear in their eyes. <laughs> Jesus, oh, Jesus Christ. Christ. Can we cut out the whole show from the show? <laughs> can we just... Can you, can, you just, can we just have the sound of silence? Can we get just... Can you just play... Can you play a clip where I'm not an awful person, please? Hello, darkness, my, my old friend. friend. <laughs> so uh, this is this is actually uh, one of those things that when I heard, <laughs> I heard that he said it. <laughs> yeah. I had heard that he said it. Yeah. And my first thought was, he didn't say that. <laughs> right. Like, I thought, what I thought, Tom, right. yeah. was I, I thought that somebody is taking Alex Jones as out fucking, I'm like, you know, like out of context, which you don't have to do. With Any Alex time, Jones. right? Yeah, Alex yeah. Jones just he has diary of the mouth. He says whatever he wants. Yeah, I can relate. And in this case, <laughs> in this case, so though, crazy. he's. I'm just gonna play the tape. I mean, I, I, I it. So it yeah. starts out. It's it's. This is a bumper yeah, for you, his show. You almost. I don't think you believe. I me. didn't believe. You believe. You did not believe. I didn't me. believe. And you I, said and it I, out loud. You said he. Tom said. Well, he said that he chopped that Hillary Clinton chopped up kids and fucked him. And I was like, that's nobody said that. Like, yeah. there's no way. And then I couldn't immediately fight it. I was like. Did I fucking make yeah, this up? There's no I was way. doubting my and then I found it. And I was like, yeah. well, I found it. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I there's didn't, no yeah. way. My, I my mind was yeah. like, there's no way yeah. somebody said that. Because I know we don't it's have It's Eli Bosnick crazy. I know we don't have libel laws as yeah. deep as as Britain, but this is libel. Uh, this is insane. This, this is, is just I would sue the fuck out of this guy if he said this about me. I would I would immediately go to court and sue the fuck out of this guy. Because yeah. I think you got a case. If you don't have a case here. Then there's literally no case that can be made if you're a celebrity or a public figure. I mean, I, I really think if this does not cross the bar, then then 
then you're just then because I know I know that you know when you're a public figure that that bar gets higher and higher and higher, right? But I mean, at a certain point, though. Oh, I know. I'm right there with you. Cecil. I mean, I mean, I'm, I understand when you say, when you say like you know. I mean, I I don't I don't know where that bar bar lays for me, but it's yeah. certainly this is well past it. So I'm going to play this now. This is a bumper for his show. So what that means is is that we're coming back from a break where he's playing music. He's playing uh, a song uh, by Johnny Cash in the background. So that's what you're going to be hearing. Resistance to tyrants is obedience. A message to Hillary. It's Alex Jones. You can run on. When I think about all the children Hillary Clinton has personally murdered and, and chopped up and, and, and raped. Yeah, there we go. I, I no, I that's that's it. That's exactly it. That's, an, that's when a, I think about it. What now is they say that number's zero? Yeah, right. Is Unless that, that's that, the next, is thing, that the next right? thing he says? Yeah. I don't think so. I have zero fear standing up against her. Oh, I guess he does say zero. Zero. He, he does, does say he uses zero. The word. He says zero, but not I, in the context you not, were referring yeah. to. Yeah, you heard me right. Hillary Clinton has personally murdered children. <laughs> go tell that. Let's just go ahead and double down on that one. If anyone wants to know what I really think about that, let me go ahead and double the motherfucker down on that. That's crazy. What What I think is crazy about this is that we have a guy who has millions, of, million plus listeners. Let's say that is horrifying, and he is able to say this sort of thing with zero proof and he has a very loyal following of people right. who will act on his words they have proven this with the yeah. pizzagate thing right and he has stirred up enough unstable souls to make this feel very dangerous incredibly dangerous incredibly I just can't hold back the truth anymore. Hillary Clinton is one of the most vicious serial killers the planet's ever seen. Again, we are, I mean, like, there is no way that you are going to think he's saying something metaphorical. Because right. he's going yeah. out of his way yeah. to say, This isn't listen. hot dogs and pizza and right. sauce. Right. This is, she killed people. Yeah. She uh, chopped them up. Three times. She fucking Judas to this shit yeah. three times. Yeah. Oh yeah, right? he had an opportunity yeah. to deny Christ right? three fucking times. <laughs> Here we are. Like in case yeah. you weren't clear, yeah. it's him right there. That guy. Jesus. God's gonna. Now there's a twist to that. Am I talking about the devil worship story with her chief of staff, her campaign chairman, looking at the menu of blood and semen and, and body parts at the, at the Aleister Crowley event? Again, he just gets crazier and crazier. Is he? Is he just saying all the things he thinks uh, reminds someone of Satanism? I, is that what he's doing? Yeah, I think so. I think he's just naming gross shit that people can get fucking feel gross about. Yeah. And that's all. What, right. What I wonder, too, is we have this. He's the one who's saying the explicit part of what goes into a satanic ritual. But this isn't the first time we've heard that Hillary is satanic. We hear this on. We hear it all the time. Kevin Swanson dozens, says it. Dozens yeah, right, and right, dozens right, of other right, shows. Right, yeah. They're just not explicitly telling you what goes into what they consider a satanic ritual. Yeah. Right. He, what he's doing is just he's, he's the graphic. Yeah. He's yeah. explicitly pointing mm -hmm. out yeah. what goes into a satanic ritual. But he's the porn version. Yeah. But the all these other people are selling us a satanic Hillary in the same sense. Yes. But he is the only one doing an extreme close-up of the genitals. Yeah. Right? That's he's, it. He's got that under the cock shot <laughs> that you're just, you're right? just like, why am I staring at a pair of nuts? Like, why, <laughs> what like, is happening? Why is do, not, do I need to see the vagina <laughs> that close? Nobody a, needs to see it except for a gynecologist. Right. That's awfully Yeah. Is awfully there anything we can... Hey, just fucking just zoom out. Just pull back just a it's, little. It's all good. But yeah. I like I'm, if I'm not in there, don't put the camera also, in there. Also... You think those porn guys, camera guys, get hazard pay for being underneath that? You know uh, what I mean? Like, you could get squirted on. I gotta say, it's poncho seating. Yeah. I'll tell you that Probably much. Probably wear goggles, I, I would wear a biohazard yeah. suit. That's what I would wear. <laughs> that shit could get for reals. <laughs> You're filing your workman's comp. You come out. Yeah, she queefed on you. <laughs> you so, come uh, out like the dude from E.T.? <laughs> That, that or the swamp thing. Yeah. The private event? Oh, no, I'm not talking about that. I mean, 200,000 plus dead Christians with her operation with Syria, 
and our operation in Libya and not letting the Christians get out and, and directing Al-Qaeda and ISIS who target and murder children and put them through sex slavery and throw Catholic priests off cliffs and kill people in mass and murder gays and everything else you can imagine because they don't like peaceful people. Is that what he's saying? I think I think he's alluding to it. Yeah, I, I think what he's saying. But but he also says has personally done it. Yeah, there's so, a difference. So he's between, doing both yeah, things, right? Yeah. I think he starts off, and I think that he's probably doing this probably because of what you're saying about libel, right? So he's going to start off and say evil, satanic, personal. He's going to say this, and then at the end of that same screed, what he'll do is say, I'm actually referring to her actions as Secretary of State that led to the deaths of children in Syria. But I believe, I mean, when you when you hear what he's saying, I think right, he's couching right. the first part so that people think that she's part of an evil, evil, satanic cabal. Yeah. Mostly, I think that because he says that. I, you know, I mean, he, right? he does come out and say with with semen and blood. And, he, and I mean, the he, Alistair he, Crowley yeah, event. He explicitly right. talks about yeah. sata so, Satanism. Right. So I'm not reading between Alex yeah. Jones's lines here. <laughs> What his fucking lines of coke <laughs> he's done in between sets? Right, no yeah. kidding. That guy looks. <laughs> <laughs> Where did his neck go? He lost he, it at one of those Alistair like, Crowley he events. He bench pressed it out. I know it's just gone. You're just one day, like he bench pressed so hard his neck. But he got like he got big, but he got like all roundy big. Yeah, no, he got he got weird. He got like he got like juiced up big. Yeah, like where where everything got big at the same yeah, it's time. Like HGH big. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Michelin oh. man. <laughs> Ready to stick it in the glory hole? Get links to their Facebook, Twitter, and if you still use it, Google Plus account at their website, dissonancepod.com. If you need to be all discreet about it, contact them by email at dissonance.podcast at gmail.com. Or you can call and leave a ransom message at 740-74-DOUBT. That's 740-743-6828. Want to hear Cognitive Dissonance commercial free and gain access to exclusive content, including full patron only shows? Head to patreon.com forward slash dissonance pod and become a patron to support the show on a per episode basis. Love commercials? Not ready to become a patron? Give the guys a five star review on iTunes or Stitcher or tell your buddies in the drunk tank about the show. We want to send a big sloppy glory hole to all the patrons and people who rate us. You fucking rock. What the fuck, man? This story is this is this is actually letters to the editor from the L.A. Times, um, and, and this is really this was really quite telling. So these are two letters that were written to the editor um, about about the way that uh, the L.A. Times handled um, a, a, a story about uh, Japanese internment camps, and you want to talk about what's wrong with treating. Um, history as if it is open to interpretation, as if it's as if it's an entirely subjective experience. Um, letters to the editor: Were the stories about Japanese internment during World War II unbalanced? Two letter writers think so, and this is insane to me. You read these two letters, and it's like, you know, not every story requires a point counterpoint. Not every story yeah. is is you know is a is a story where it's like, well, every. Every thought on this subject is, is equally valid. Um, so this, this is one of the assertions by this letter writer who objected to the way that the um, Japanese internment uh, issue was treated as a negative thing. He's basically saying, look, you know, this, this isn't necessarily a negative thing. The Japanese, had they been left to their own devices, they, you know, who knows what kind of untold harm they could have caused. Um, so they had a job. And the Japanese, this is a quote from this story. Virtually everyone in the U.S. was assigned jobs to help in the war effort. The Japanese were assigned the job of staying out of the way and not causing complications. And then moving past. The interned Japanese were housed, fed, protected, and cared for. Many who would complain would not even be alive if the internment had not been done. That's fucking speculation. Um, I salute the Japanese for doing the part that they were assigned during the war. Uh, as I salute all those that sacrificed for the war effort. I have zero respect for those trying to rewrite history just to make themselves feel good. Who the fuck is rewriting history to make the Japanese internment seem like it's not a grand injustice to citizens of this country whose homes and businesses were taken away from them so they could get stuck in fucking internment camps? This, this idea, and, and now we're going to rewrite that portion of our history to say, well, I mean... Maybe it wasn't so bad. And we start thinking about things along these lines, 
And how many steps away are we from, you know, a Muslim registry? And how many steps away might we be from a Muslim internment camp or something along those lines? This is a really horrifying and dangerous way of thinking about, about the, the way that we treat people in a country that is a country of immigrants. You, are, you literally are staring into virtually the unvarnished energy of Satan himself when you come up against the forces that are pushing the homosexual agenda forward. This story is also from Right Wing Watch. This is Kevin Swanson. This is the guy who threatened to cover himself in poop. Yeah, this uh, is the poop Which is guy. my favorite thing. This is the poop I'm guy. I'm so mad I should cover myself in poop. Yeah. Like, <laughs> nope, never been that mad. Been real mad, by the way. <laughs> Been so mad, never been like, the solution to this is more poo. I'll show them. Yeah. So Kevin Swanson, the movie Moonlight, uh, I don't know what that is, is a sinister, evil, demonic work aimed at prepping boys for pederasty. And and we will find out on this clip what Moonlight is. Right. So let's let it, let's let Kevin Swanson. Oh, I, I'm sure. He's exactly. getting his synopsis he right from Rotten us, Tomatoes. It, he'll, he will give us, <laughs> by the way, he will mention Rotten Tomatoes. In this. Will he really? Yes, he will. Oh, well, then fuck me. Well, I'd like to switch gears for a second and take a look at this new movie called Moonlight. It's a coming-of-age movie for an African-American young man who has homosexual urges, and it's 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 a it's a huge step towards the indoctrination <laughs> towards <laughs> the inter interrogative. He just he just Porky pigged himself. I can't. He look, totally man. Porky. In doctor, in doctor, in doctor, doctor, right? In the in the doctor, learn them. Uh, da, da, in the not that 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 donations. Uh. If you don't know the word, pick a different word. You are an idiot. <laughs> like you, 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 you don't know how to say the word. You don't know how to say that word. Fucking switch gears. Don't double down on saying it weirder and wronger. <laughs> weirder. <laughs> No, you're just making sounds, man. A pro homosexual viewpoint, and and I think also a a promosexual. <laughs> well, I, I, I'm going I, pro. <laughs> I love a pro homosexual viewpoint. What does that mean? That you're just hey, you want to have sex with somebody, and they're an adult, you just do it. Yeah, I have a pro homosexual viewpoint. Like if there's a homosexual, I'd be like, yeah, good job. Yeah, I don't know. I literally don't care. Are we getting lunch? Like, what? What difference does it make? I'm sure, to there's me? lots of guys, gay guys, who like their amateur, right? Version, yeah, exactly. You know, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> just play the clip. <laughs> it's just no. That's just what they search for. Right? Well. Yeah, yeah. Sure. And if you're searching for amateur gay porn, you can visit our sponsor, AdamandEve.com. <laughs> Use Gloria at <laughs> checkout and get fifty percent off almost any item. <laughs> A training of the young boys in the area of homosexuality, which is not entirely foreign to the homosexual lifestyle. Of course, as you well know, in the history of homosexuality, pederasty is uh, really an essential component. No, well, okay, there's so much here. Hold on. Essential. But can component. I ask you a question? Right. I want to yeah. ask you a question. When were you trained to be heterosexual? What was your training like? Was it like how to train your Snake. <laughs> well, it was a montage. <laughs> it's always so. a montage. <laughs> Got the eye of the tiger. In. Was it? No, 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 no. What it was, was it? Katy Perry roar. <laughs> For gay guys, it's raining men. <laughs> <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's YMCA. <laughs> Dancing <I'm> a, queen. <laughs> of the homosexual movement has been for thousands and thousands of years. And that's no surprise to anybody who studied history for more than 10 minutes. Um, but uh, the movie calls, is called Moonlight. And as, as you can well imagine, the critics are head over heels in love with this. Again, Bill, it's, it's, it's a universal 98% of critics on Rotten Tomatoes are saying thumbs up, thumbs up. It's very rare to find 98% of critics going for any drama. Now, they'll do it on a documentary from time to time, but on a drama? That's just patently not true. Yeah, there's, there's lots there's, of movies that are in the high of, 90s. There's lots of movies that, that wind up getting... Yeah. I, I looked earlier, and there was there was several from the 2010s on. Yeah. So it's, it's, there's it's, one from this year. It's not very, very there's, rare. There's a, there's, a, <clears throat> there's a movie from this year. I think it's called Hell or High Water or Come Hell or High Water or something. Mm. There's a movie from this year, let alone a drama, yeah. with a 98% as well. Sure. So it's just, it's just not it's just true. A, you it's know just what that is? not true. Just a good movie. Yeah. It's just a good movie. That's all he's upset that people like this movie. 
I think he's upset that they don't immediately give it a zero because they're they're gay people. Because there's gays in because it. Because he, he doesn't want he doesn't want people yeah. to know they exist. He's right. absolutely he's absolutely incensed that human beings know that gay people exist because it to him it opens up that door to being gay because you exist. He this is a guy though, I think and and he did come out and say he's like they should they should be put to death, but we shouldn't do it. Right, I remember. Remember that. Yeah. that that was sort of like yeah. how, but right. He, I don't think he would be. He's not pushing for it, but he is. He is saying that that's the punishment for. Yeah, he, he's, it. like that's yeah. the correct right. judgment yeah. for. Right. It. Yeah. Friends, this is this is almost unheard of for Rotten Tomatoes critics. They're uh, they are in love with this movie called Moonlight, which is coming out uh, this week or this weekend, and. Uh, apparently it it starts out, it's three scenes as a 10 year old boy considering homosexuality, speaking of it, uh, sort of dallying a bit with it. Then there's the 16 year old boy, you know, this is the same boy at 16 years of age now having homosexual relations. And it's a fairly, uh, explicit scene in which, uh, you know, this is an R movie. This is an R rated movie. This isn't a, this isn't a PG 13 movie. If it has a sexually explicit scene in it, then it has people in that scene or people in that theater that are supposed to, if they're with children, are supposed to be able to, they're, they're, they're guardians or parents. They're right. the people there that are trying to explain this to the child. Yeah, but these are the same, I mean, Swanson and his ilk are the same idiots that get, you know, all bent out of shape every time there's a fucking side boob visible. You know, they're, these are the same idiots that they go out of their way to find things in movies to be offended by. Like, oh my God, guys, there's a booby. And then they get yeah. all freaked out they because mad. they're like, I went to the movie, it was rated R. They had to say, say it was rated R for sexual scenes and then there was a sexual scene. And yeah. they're, they get all fucking weirded out because they're these people are, you know, what, what's scary, man, is that a movie like this hits all their fucking triggers, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Sex and sexuality terrifies them. Yeah. Oh, heterosexual sex and sexuality fucking flips their shit. Like oh, they yeah. simply sure. they can't deal with it. Like, ah they yeah. get all fucking the weird feeling in their pants are too tight. And then homosexual sex? Yeah. That <laughs> well, it makes their pants a little more tight. Though. Right. That's no, well, that's why. exactly yeah. it, right? Yeah. But this is every fucking trigger simultaneously. The, the the movie is creating the homosexual sexual tension, drawing the audience into this part of the unfruitful works of darkness. <laughs> the unfruitful works of darkness. <laughs> I'm sorry. Well that's amazing. I mean you know, it depends on your view on what's unfruitful. <laughs> I like to do my unfruitful work with the lights on. I'm just saying. Uh, even as the previews do this, it's a sinister, evil, demonic work <laughs> that wants to present the whole thing as very sweet, very nice. And anybody who opposes these demonic ideas is a persecutor as evil as the God of the Old Testament, the New Testament. So that's yeah, I, I would say that the God. I would. I'll agree that the God, yeah, of, the the God of the Old Testament and, garbage, and the God of the is New a Testament garbage is, deity. Right. Yeah. It's yeah. it's a worthless deity. It's a yeah. Angry, mean-spirited, bitter yeah. war god. It's a genie. Right. It's an angry fucking yeah. genie. Your, your god, as portrayed by your own text, yeah. is an actual yeah. monster. The songs you sing of praise are horror. Yeah. Uh, horror. Yeah, I, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. It, it's a petty, jealous, shitty, mean-spirited god. Yeah. Great. With a, okay. And if you emulate that god... Why should I respect you? Yeah, right. I'm just like God. Oh, you're really bad. You're, you're an like awful person. Kind you're of the kind worst. of the worst person. Yeah. <laughs> and and what he's saying here is he's saying that you know this is satanic, and it's like we get to judge what's good and what's not good. Yeah, that's how this works. That's how cinema works. That's how art works. Is that we get we have an opportunity as human beings to look at what the art that another human being created, and we get to judge that based on itself, and. You, what you're trying to do is be like, yeah, but you also have to look at it through this lens of this 2000 year old blood God book. Right. Sorry. Yeah, I only do that for blade. <laughs> Pretty much the worldview, I think conveyed in this thing. And, uh, it's all in line with prepping boys for peder- pederasty as, as the Greeks did. Uh, the corruption of boys is the greatest delight in the homosexual pagan heart. And you'll find that throughout history as well. Yeah. Oh, what? Uh... How do you prep a boy for pederasty? How, how, I mean, like, like I said like, earlier, a lot of, a lot lube. of lube. That's I mean, it, really, right? A lot of lube and some NyQuil. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I got you. I you you did yeah. not. You got uncomfortable. Things we're cutting out of this no. show. Number one. Oh, you use value.
So we're back with Thomas, and I'm going to say Thomas from Thomas and the Bible, because that's what we're going to be talking about. Thomas, you finished the Bible. Are you converted? I did. Did you convert? Oh, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah. What, what, to what religion? <laughs> how, on a scale Good from question. one to compelling, how compelling was it? How was Revelation? Because oh we read Revelation. Yeah. So that's a book I've actually know about. Yeah, we did. How was Revelation? My fi- okay, Revelation is great. So yeah, I did finish it. And you know, it, is there any chance I could get you guys to link my uh, the talk video maybe? Because I did a talk about the whole thing and I thought it was really funny and it's on YouTube. So Yeah, we can link I, it for I, sure. It's, it's, yeah, it's a talk you gave at, at the Mythicist Milwaukee conference. Yeah, yeah, where I yeah, talked we'll, about we'll, it. We'll link to it for sure. sure. Nice. Yeah. Talked about a bunch of highlights. So my favorite. But what else do you want to shamelessly plug? Is there anything else? <laughs> yeah, I don't get paid for it or anything. I just think it's if people want to check it out. Um, you so, should monetize it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Put it behind a paywall. I hear good things. Yeah. <laughs> you could call it the fourth watcher. I do. My, I love the. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the elaborate series of paywalls is such a good joke. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, th- the best part about Revelation to me, here's my favorite thing about these idiots back then who were writing this. They had this idea that, like, if all this shit was happening, you know, picture us, okay, th- us three, right? We're as fucking atheists as you get, right? I mean, we're pretty much, I, I don't know about you guys, but I-, I-, I mean, you know, the world would have to be completely different for me to believe in God. It's just, God belief for me is just not compatible with the world we live in. Like, it just isn't. But let's say we're all three here and the fucking stars start falling from the sky. By the way, my favorite part about Revelation is two stars fall onto the earth and then more things happen after that. I know, right? (laughs) That's the first thing we focused on when we read it. We're just like, yeah, the stars, um, that's just the end of everything. The best part is two stars. After the first star hits the earth, there's not even room for the second star. (laughs) After one star, the planet was like, oh, I don't know if I could take another star. Right. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> oh, a man. star hits the earth and the earth's yeah. like oh, I got more what else you got bitch so great uh, and then and then the other thing that's so great about it that I love about these these morons who are writing this is if we saw a fucking stars fall in the sky horsemen like coming after us weird creatures doing all this shit like uh, Jesus comes back all this crap the three of us would be like all right, you know what? Fine. I guess Revelation was true. We'd be like, eventually, we'd be like, you're right. I guess if, yeah, if you're gonna fucking, right. if you're there's, I got fucking uh, a snake eating my dick. I got just all this <laughs> shit happening to me. That I'm on fire. Demons are fucking me in the ass. I got just like <laughs> terrible STDs. That well, actually, I already, I already had that. But no, again, yeah. <laughs> again, <laughs> if all that was happening. We'd be like, you know what? Fine, God, if you're going to be an asshole, sure, we accept Jesus. We accept him. Are you happy? That's what we would do. <laughs> but, but, but in their mind, in Revelation— I love that you're so begrudgingly doing it. You're like, fine, fine. You get, get, get the snake off my dick. Yeah, exactly. Well, it, it, it's so illogical. But, but we would do that. Like, if all this happened exactly how it was in the book, and it, all this weird paranormal shit was happening, the three of us, we would be, like, very confused— but it would be like, well, either I'm hallucinating really effectively or right. or this is all real. But in the book, there's still people who don't get it. There's still people who are like, nah, not happening. I did not. Uh, la, 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 la. This is not happening. There's yeah, not a, but di- it's worse a snake than that. eating my dick right now. They're still in denial. <laughs> <laughs> but it's worse than that because not only are they not converting immediately to, in the face of evidence, right? Which, yeah. is, all that any of, uh, which is all that rational yeah. people have ever asked for. It's just, yeah, great story. Do you have literally any evidence? You have a one evidence mm-hmm. unit, please. I'll take a single compelling evidence unit. No. Okay, fine. But then all this stuff happens. Each one of the things in Revelation is incompatible with any life being sustained at all. Yeah. <laughs> like ever. It's not only would you, you would die immediately. You just, every one of these things, it's just, but it's the same thing as in the beginning of the book, which I thought actually bookended it quite nicely, right? Because when, uh, when, when, when God keeps hardening the Pharaoh's heart and yeah. sending plague after plague against Egypt, every one of those plagues would have killed every single person in Egypt. There's no like, oh, and then he hardened his heart again. It's like, who's? Yeah, yeah, he's yeah. fucking dead. All There's the no water, way he survived all the, water the first is blood, plague. blood, right? Like they're literally right. all their water is blood. I'm pretty sure. Like, do, yeah. do they just get by on blood? They're like, oh, this isn't so bad. I could drink this. <laughs> I'm not a Jehovah's Witness. I'll take it. (laughs) Put it in a warm glass. (laughs) Then run it through a cold room. (laughs) Another thing that was so fun about, because I came on uh, after I finished the Old Testament a a little while ago, uh, which, by the way, the Old Testament is the entire fucking Bible. It's the whole fucking thing is the Old Testament. No one cares about it. It doesn't count. It doesn't count. I read, for years of my life, I read fucking (laughs) a book that does not count. You bring up anything in the Old Testament, like, what? What is, what are you quoting? What is that? 
I've never heard of that. That's not in the Bible. I know. No one reads it. But so finally I finish 80% of the Bible or whatever the fucking Old Testament is. Maybe it's 75%. And I get to the, the only part that counts. And some of my favorite things are uh, how sort of ineffective Jesus is. Isn't that weird? Like, Jesus is the son of God. He, he is God. He's all that shit. And there's my favorite scene. I talk about it in the talk if you want to watch it. I'd probably do a better job than here. But my favorite scene, and it's in all four Gospels. It's in all four Gospels. I love it. They didn't have to put this in. He goes <laughs> back to his hometown, and he tries to do miracles, and he's just not working. And, like, people are like, what the fuck is happening? Like, he can't do He's not magical anymore. <laughs> It's like David Blade drops the cards. Yeah. <laughs> he's, he's, he's like to, he's like to all the people. He's like, you have to understand this never happens right? to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah he tries right. to pull a rabbit Sorry. out of the hat. Sorry. The rabbit's dead or some I'm shit. Tired like, of just... drinking. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I got whiskey dick, guys. <laughs> Yeah, it's silly putty in a coin slot. I'm sorry. There's nothing I can do about it. <laughs> that would be a better excuse. What he does is he's run out of town and he says this. He says, ah, no one's a prophet in their own town. <laughs> It's so good. That he's is God. amazing. That's, amazing. that's like he's that's literally like, God. This is in the fucking Bible. Go figure. Go find it. It's he's like, nah, sorry, just no one's a prophet in their own town. Like these guys went to high school with me. Like they just <laughs> they whatever. Know. They know my show, right? They're like, yeah. no, yeah. man, not fucking Jesus it's again so, with your it, fucking prophet shit. It strikes me as so authentic. It really does. Like it's the one thing that I read is in all four of the Gospels where I thought, you know what? I believe that happened. I believe there was a guy who was like you know, rumored to be a prophet. Like, you can get away with that shit. Whenever someone says, hey, this is Eastern medicine, everyone believes it's magical, you know? It's like that. And then he comes back to his hometown, and everyone's like, that guy? I want, you know, like... That, yeah, right? That guy's a loser. <laughs> like, he's in the chess club. He did, you know, he's like, <laughs> like, you know what I mean? It strikes me as so authentic. They look, look, they look at him and they're like, I knew that fucker back when. Like, that's, mm -hmm. that, that's that guy who had the fucking hot girlfriend in camp, right? Doesn't like, doesn't like, doesn't no. I gave that guy a wedgie in PE every <laughs> day. <laughs> Like literally every day. <laughs> Doesn't this fly in the face of the uh, those guys who do that um, that knockout touch karate though? Oh, yeah. <laughs> right. So like those guys that surround themselves with a bunch of people who think yeah, that they yeah. can like it's wave exactly their that. hand like they have the force and knock people right. out. And then they go do it to a real fighter. Then there's a re like a real MMA guy. <laughs> he just like punk, punk, yeah. punk, and yeah. their eye just goes. <laughs> like fucking explodes. It literally the, just throws one lazy punch at them. Like just the lazy, like, oh, I guess I'll punch you, dude. Like, I don't want to do this, but I will. The guy keeps waving his hand out. like he's a fucking Jedi. Yeah. It's the best. Yeah. It's like, do you remember that guy who was on stage and he was like, I, you know, he, he was like, I have the magic voodoo to kill people. Oh, yeah. He and was then going he's, after that, uh, whatever that guy's name is, the guy I can't pronounce yeah, his name. I, yeah, same, yeah, yeah. And he's like, yeah, all right, well, let's go on stage. You can kill me on stage with your fucking magic mind. <laughs> and the guy's like, whoa, <laughs> And you're like, no, none of that's uh, working. Right, yeah. yeah. The best part is, like, the only reason you would accept the challenge is you think you could do it, yeah. right? Yeah. Because you're not like, oh, fuck, he called my bluff. Like, yeah. I'm calling six And that's happened. Yeah. And that's happened. People, yeah. th these people think they can do it. Like, they get so deluded by, who's to say that didn't happen with, with Jesus or some shit? I don't know. Like, they get so deluded with their own weird yes men that keep falling over when he makes weird yeah, like sounds. Like, if you had 12 like, hey, of them, for example. And he falls over. <laughs> yeah. yeah, like if you had 12 dudes following you around everywhere sucking your yeah. dick all the time, <laughs> maybe all of a sudden. But, you know, like, there had to be that moment where if the, any part of the Jesus story was real, where you had to look around and be like, as they're nailing him to a chunk yeah. of wood, like, yeah. Oh, I've I've made a terrible decision. Have you guys yeah. ever seen the the Passion of the Christ? No, I haven't. No. Okay. Well, then it's is there a guy when he's getting nailed up that goes, "Do your death punch" or whatever? <laughs> <laughs> so, Seriously, does that though, if you watch that movie and you're a non-believer, it's a guy who gets tortured and killed. That's yeah. all it is. It's nothing yeah, else. Right. That's and there's very little mysticism in the movie. There's very little of the you know, sort of he did miracles that, that I remember. All I mm. remember of the movie is the beatings and then him being dragged yeah. to the streets and his mom crying and him being like thrown up on a cross and fucking dying up there. And that's yeah. that's all that's what I remember the movie. And I don't remember like and then he walked on water and then he fed a bunch of people. I don't remember any of that from the movie. All I remember is because it's really the passion. They're talking about yeah. the, the time yeah, in right. which he was beat. So what what you really watch if you're a non believer is just the torture and death of a person in a drama yeah. format. And so you know, you're sort of, you're struck at sort of the realism of it. You're like, holy shit. Oh, I shit. thought this so often when I read the Bible, I thought, wow, 
I would love to make the real version of this where somebody just really believes something and then they died or whatever the circumstance is for the partic- for the particular story. Like, oh, this happened. Or like, better yet, the ones where they trick people into giving them shit. I love yeah. that. Like, I want to do the real version of that where the priests like all know that it's bullshit, but they're tricking the people into like giving them their food and stuff. <laughs> I want to do all that. Just the real version of everything. It would be so fun. I, You know, and you're right, right? Because the, the way they set up their laws so that the priests have, you know, better yeah. they have they get the better cuts of meat and they're yeah, the ones who sure, get the right, food yeah. and the one you read it and you're like well of course that's why you set it up you set it up so that <laughs> yeah. you're the one who's going to get all the best yeah. stuff right it's it's yeah. like it's like when the it's like when 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 the prophets for other religions are like and it turns out it gets to sleep with all the women and you're yeah. like so you you just made that up yeah because you're horny yeah. like that's it <laughs> Like, it's not, you, you really, no. Yeah, it's like what? the Mormons where you're just like, yeah, you know, and I it, get to inseminate your right. wife, and I get to inseminate your wife. Like, I, I, like, who's buying this shit? At least Jesus didn't do that. Like, give Jesus some credit. Like, he, he actually just lived kind of a shitty, painful life and then died. Like, so if, if, it, if the guy really existed and maybe he really thought these things, like, you do have to kind of pity him in some ways, you know? It's yeah, because he was a fucking prophet that didn't even profit. Like yeah. he did a bad <laughs> job. <laughs> the fuck, man? Profit 101. Like uh, just step one, profit. Like that's the first thing yeah. you do. First thing you step do. Step one, you're the prophet. Step I mean, if, three, if I'm gonna invent a religion profit. where people are gonna do awesome shit, yeah. I'll tell you what, I'm inventing that Mormonism shit. Like yeah. I'm gonna bang a whole bunch of hot chicks. My yeah. council of that's talking to God is going to report back that that God needs me to have like 12 women on my dick at all times. Like, <laughs> right, I can't exactly. be, Cannot ever have a dry dick. Like, it's just constant. You know, like, God, hey, quote the Lord, uh, you know, uh, he's, I don't make the rules. Do you think I make these fucking rules? No, I'm as unhappy about it as you guys are. Yeah, and, now and, back on. And why would you, yeah. like, Like, why do, those, why do those guys do the cults where they're like, yeah, well, okay, and we're all going to wear Nikes and kill ourselves when a comic goes over it. Right? right? Yeah. Like, wait, yeah. there could be better stuff than this. Let's figure this out better. Right, you're making it up. Like, yeah. it's not even, like, if you're going to make up something pointless, like, at least build Legos. Like, not yeah. kill yourself. It's like, <laughs> it's terrible. Yeah, I mean, the Nikes, fine. That was, like, kind of neutral. Like, yeah. I guess that's good. But, but to kill yourself. I'm I a Reebok okay. guy, but okay. okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so you moved on from the Bible, though, into a new book? Yeah, I'm sort of on a weird hiatus, to be honest with you. So, I mean, I, for patrons, I did one uh, reading of the Apocrypha. I, I picked a book that's recognized by, like, Catholics, but not by other, you know, like, certain denominations the exorcist and it's actually great book the bet <laughs> it's it's called a uh, tobit actually do you know that one uh no. no is it is that a hobbit is that one of the <laughs> little guys that goes yeah to... that's i'm actually just reading the silmarillion just... <laughs> i don't know uh, but is. but no it, the book is called <laughs> tobit and the funny thing about it is now i'm kind of on a weird hiatus i don't know if i'm gonna keep going because it's i don't know we'll see but the funny thing about it is is this was the best thing i've ever read compared to the rest of the bible and it didn't make the bible Like, it's a first-person story where a guy is talking about, like, he's just leveling with us. Like, it's amazing. Some guy named Tobit or whatever is just like, hey, uh, so here's what happened to me. And he's speaking in first person, which almost never happens in the Bible. And he's just telling his story of, like, yeah, these were the challenges that God said. And he talks about what, you know, he lost everything. And and, and I was like, wow, this is, if the whole Bible were this, like, it really wouldn't be that bad. It would be interesting. It's the best reading I've done thus far, and it is not even in the real fucking book. <laughs> I wonder why it got excised. Do you know why it got excised from the... Oh, dude, who the fuck knows? I did some research, and it just... It was included in some of it, like I said, but then others were like, oh, I think, it, it... I think yeah, I know the answer. The editors were real upset with the way it used passive voice, and so they just, <laughs> they just put it on the side, and they're like, we're probably not going to use it. But how funny it, is it that the difference... Be- like, this is supposedly... God's perfect fucking book. You know, know, like this is supposedly (laughs) the most important thing in the world. And all it was was some people in some fucking councils years ago, centuries ago, decided like, well, this one, I don't know, we don't like it or something. It's less perfect. Yeah, it's yeah, it's a, that, this one of the perfect books. Yeah, this yeah, yeah. one is a little less perfect. And they perfect. disagreed. Like what some some denominations were like, "No, no, that is perfect." And others were like, "Nah, that's human." Like the di- the chasm of difference that it should be, you know, like between God writing something and like, "No, this isn't right. A human wrote this." It should be the biggest fucking difference in the yeah. world. <laughs> exactly. And it's, right. it's, 
It's not even different. Like it, if you included this in the Bible, it would it would make no tangible difference in the world. It should Nothing be the, would it, be any different. It should be the difference of like a, a you know a hundred and thirty five pound weakling guy trying to deadlift something and the world's strongest man deadlifting. Right, exactly. Yeah. Like right? he lifts up half the earth, and you're so like, you're oh saying yeah, Eli that guy. versus Tom. Is yeah. that what you're saying? <laughs> What's that? It's not that. Eli, so you're saying uh, yeah. Eli not, versus Tom. <laughs> it's not that big a disparity. Actually. <laughs> <laughs> He's so strong. <laughs> Yeah, and it's so funny just because of whatever capricious decision they made, you know, 1,200 years ago, this is regarded as dog shit versus the word of God. And it would make no difference. Like, you read it and you're like, yeah, that could be in the fucking Bible. Who cares? It sounds <laughs> just like all the other bullshit that's in the Old Testament. So you loved it. You're glad you read it? I do. It. Oh, the whole Bible? Uh, <laughs> yeah, the whole Bible. Yeah, you you well, loved it. it you're was glad fun. you read it. It was enthralling. You found the whole. Did you find it? Now, I, I do want to know genuinely. Like, I know, obviously, you're, you know, you came out of this, and you're still very much an atheist. Was there anything in it? Any? And I'm being genuine. Is there anything in it that you found at all spiritually compelling? Did you find any of it that really spoke to Even you Even philosophically all? compelling. <clears throat> yeah. There, you know, when when I read it, it strikes me that, yes, Jesus did say some pretty interesting things. You know, like... They're not, they're not like Einstein level of genius or anything. They're just like, hey, just don't be assholes. Like, <laughs> it's yeah. pretty much just that. <laughs> hey, everybody just cut it out with the fucking being assholes, basically. But when you put that against everything else you're reading, it's like, well, that, that was kind of cool that he had a really weird message that, like we were just saying a minute ago, it didn't really benefit him, you know, like, it, and it's kind of cool. It's like, well, it, you know, he had, he had some okay messages here. Then again, um, you, you know, the, uh, whoever the fuck wrote the gospels, you know, it wasn't Jesus and it wasn't people who knew Jesus. It was like, maybe, maybe one or two of them were, but pretty much just hand me down stuff. So who knows like what we're actually getting that Jesus actually said, Sure, but assuming he did, it's pretty cool how different and progressive uh, some of his messages were. But no, I mean, largely it's awful. Like it's just awful writing. It's just boring. There's th there's so much of it that of the Bible that but you hold can't on. even. We're, we're told no all meaning. the time. We're told all the time that the Bible is beautifully written. Like I hear no. that all the time. I know I don't <laughs> no. think it's beautifully written either. But yeah. I want to ask you because you read much more of it than I have. I hear all the time that the Bible is beautifully written. It's beautifully written. And I've I know I I had gone to church you know when I was younger. And I've been to, you know, masses and funerals, and they do readings and all of that. And I've never really been struck very often by the beauty of the writing. I, I, I'm curious if you have any thoughts on just the writing itself. Well, I specifically went with King James because even people like Dawkins and Hitchens, I think, were like, well, you need to read it in the King James just because of the poetry. And I was like, okay, I'll do that. I, wanna, I wanted to give it its best shot. But while there are some poetic turns of phrase occasionally— uh, it's so confusing and boring. It's just like like everything we think of with Bible stories, right? This is a point I, I made as well. Think of Noah or or like, uh, I don't know, uh, another, any random, Moses, like all that stuff. Noah specifically, Adam and Eve, that shit. And I think I told you this the last time I was on this show. That shit is one page. Yeah. All of yeah. that crap, all of that stuff. You figure that covers tens of thousands of years or whatever, 6,000 years or whatever it would be. It co it's like, oh, the beginning of the earth and Adam and Eve and that saga and, oh, Noah and his ark he built. I mean, that's got to take up a bunch of pages, right? There's got to be 200 pages of story there. No, it's just a paragraph that says, <laughs> Noah built a boat. The It rained. And it stopped raining. That's all it is. Anything interesting is stuff we've added in yeah. over time. Yeah. Like we've kind of made an image of it that's that's not what it really is. It's It's shocking just how bare bones and crappy it is. And some of it <laughs> is so actively crappy. bad that you can't remember anything good that came out of it. <laughs> like, it just <laughs> erases all of it. It reminds me of some podcasts I've listened uh, to. Reminds Ooh. me of my marriage. <laughs> <laughs> so, Thomas, if people were going to find uh, one or many of your podcasts, where would they look? Yeah, do you have one website that rules them all or just at I, this point? I have will all yeah, it's called the Tobit, Tom. I know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's called uh, Google.com. No. Uh, I, I will eventually have one website to point people to, but I would say search for Atheistically Speaking, search for Opening Arguments specifically. Um, I'm really proud of what me and Andrew are doing, mainly Andrew, <laughs> let's face it. I'm really proud of what Andrew's doing over on Opening Arguments. I think it's, personally, I, I think it's opinions that just need to be out there. Like, his expertise just needs to be in the world. Um, and, I, like, with certain things like Hillary's email scandal, he yeah. covered it in a way that just nobody was doing. Yeah, I think yeah. it's legitimately good 
media that we're doing. And it's a weird position to be a part of that, <laughs> like to actually be able to be proud of something. It's a weird feeling. I'm not used to it. But uh, uh, tell but me how that feels. I've never been proud of anything. I know. So I'm I, curious. You'll never crazy. know, Tom. I, uh, I want to kind of live vicariously. No, no, you can't. God damn it. <laughs> Thomas, thanks for joining us. It was a lot yeah, of fun buddy. as usual, man. Oh, thank you guys so much. And thank you for coming on uh, my 300th episode special there. And uh, I love you guys. I always love coming on your show. Thanks. So we want to thank, of course, we want to thank all our patrons, but we would like to thank our most recent patrons, Beetlejuice, Donovan, Michael, Slam Nasty, Paul, Andrew, David, Freak Show 808, The Dude, Needs Coffee, John, Christopher, Terry, John, Elias, Brian, Lachazar, Morton, Benice, Borderline Rhetorical, Andy, House Dorf, Robert, Blood Cream Latte, <laughs> and Adrian. Thanks so much for your generous donations. We really do appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, this is, uh, we are going into the new year here and uh, and we are going to be having some video soon we're using patreon dollars to fund new stuff for not just for patrons but for the show in general and so we want to thank everybody who donates to the show you make the show better so thank you so much i see so I, I have to say though i feel like telling people they can see us might cause them to withdraw their donation it also it's not, not mandatory. It also not necessarily is making the show better. <laughs> <laughs> it's making the show more widescreen. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but we are going to be hopefully having more video in the near future. Yes. Uh, we had a lot of fun with the uh, the uh, election night coverage that we did. And we, we have a plan to possibly do something right after the inauguration. Like vomit. Um, and so that should be good. And then we're going to be doing that. Pretty much, I, I don't know. We'll see. We'll, we'll, we're going to try to do some other stuff as time goes on. We'll let you know when we finally get our streaming stuff set up. It's hopefully going to be done before the end of the year, though. So we want to read a little bit of email here. We got an email from, uh, this is from Steve. And Steve sent this in, and he said, um, just so you know, the two Aussies who were at TAM were Linley and Simone, and we forgot about them. I didn't forget because they sent my son yeah. a bunch of these little koala bear things. I, I, well, I had, forgot their names, I should I've say. I've forgotten their yeah. names. That, no, I, a have, I, I didn't forget them. Yeah. I mean, what I mean to say is I forgot their names as yeah. well. Yeah, yeah. Wonderful people. Yeah, really Wonderful great people. people. Loved them. Uh, we got a message from Jessica, and Jessica said, you know, uh, if you can't afford to support good journalism, we talked about supporting mm-hmm. good journalism by, you know, subscribing to a newspaper, or, you know, different journalists, maybe uh, subscribe to a website that has, a, you know, The Atlantic, or she says another great way to fund good journalism is to go to your public library and ask for those things. So if you were to go in and say, I'd like a copy of The Atlantic, or I'd like to, you know, read The New York Times, I'd like to read these things. The, the library will subscribe to the subscription for it. So you have access to that. But if they will, they will not get the subscription. And she says they will get high circulation materials like Duck Dynasty DVDs. Jesus. Like, can you what imagine? The like, fuck? it's like, it's like just a ridiculous, uh, dichotomy between those two things it's like the spectrum is right just, yeah how vast could yeah. the gulf be exactly. between a duck dynasty dvd and the atlantic right <laughs> like when you think about the quality of information that's right. being presented i like on a scale perspective it's like it, it, it's like like a, a proton versus the entirety of the universe yeah. <laughs> It's it just like on a, on a set of yeah. scales, I can't even imagine. It's like absolute zero versus a supernova, right? you just know, can't. like in the temperature range. Yeah. yeah, it's just ridiculous. Duck Dynasty DVDs. Yeah. Jesus, that's a low bar. Quack. We've got a message from Bjorn, and Bjorn was saying, hey, uh, I was worried I was in a liberal echo chamber, and then I wound up uh, searching for other things like Milo and Jordan Peterson and some other people. Uh how do I get out of my new alt-right involuntary echo chamber? (laughs) And uh, one of the things that I think is interesting about this is, you know, we talk about the echo chamber that you're in, you know, if it's a liberal echo chamber or whatever, and trying to get out of that. I don't think going to Milo is getting out of that echo chamber. My personal opinion would be to go to try to find people that are moderates and work on trying to find those moderate voices out there. Um, Get out of your echo chamber in that sense. Don't go try to find somebody who is completely 
you know, the antithesis of what you think. My my thoughts on this is um, if you want out of an echo chamber, find their intellectuals, not the pseudo intellectuals, not your Twitter heroes, not not the rest of it. Find real intellectuals. Um, intellectuals are less prone, I think, to uh, the the echo chamber effect. You know, they may be skewed. They may be right. They may be left. Yeah. But they, they tend, if you find real actual intellectuals, if that's really what you're looking for, um, I think you'll get out of that world. And Milo's not an intellectual, man. No. He's not an intellectual. He's a comedian. I mean, right. if you listen to him, he's a comedian. He's a, yeah. So, so get rid of all of them. Put them all off to the side. They're garbage people with nothing to say. Yeah. And find real intellectuals. <clears throat> Wolf Wing sent a message in, and he was basically talking about how sensationalist the news is and why we shouldn't be surprised that people are sort of turning away from it. I understand. I understand, and I respect that that viewpoint. But I also think that viewpoint is part of the problem that we're in right now. So we're moving away from sensationalized um, legacy journalism, right? Which would be things like the TV news and what have you. And are there problems with that? Man, there's so many problems with that. I'm right there with you. Um, I, I get all that. But we didn't turn to something better. Is the, is is yeah, part of my right, concern? Right. You know, so we we turn to something just as sensational. Yeah. Right. It, you th- know, there's nothing less sensational about what we're looking yeah, at now. Sharing a Twitter story or something like right. that. Like especially the ones that are, you know, these these unsubstantiated make you feel <clears throat> things. These are feel pieces, just the same way that that story that I, I know I'm beating it in the ground, but that story about that guy who's like, yo, Facebook post told me that they stopped ambulances. Right. That story is a feel piece. It's yeah. not a fact piece, and that's what major news organizations are we're doing with a lot of the stuff you know like right you know the, the the thing that i at least can say about something like tv news and again i don't like tv news or yeah. a newspaper is that you are not curating it yeah i am really i'm really dubious of the average person myself very much included about my ability to curate yeah. quality news i am not a trained editor yeah. That is not where my training is. I have a fucking degree in English literature. Yeah. <laughs> like I am I am a read good guy. <laughs> like I, <laughs> that is what I do. Right. So, yeah, I, so I'm I'm dubious of saying like I'm going to just I'm I'm going to go out and I'm going to curate my own news sources. I just I yeah. It's just not I just think it's shit. I just think it's shit. We got a bunch of messages about <laughs> uh, eggnog instructions. We're going to post this on this episode show notes, so check it out. We also got a ton of messages oh, yeah. from people about Diane Reem's uh, voice. Uh, she has a neurological disease that affects her vocal cords. Yeah, it's called advanced aging. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> look, she, look I, a lot of people sent us this message. We're not trying to make fun of her disability. We're, I'm we're trying think, to make I'm fun, fun of her, her age. age. And people weren't mad about that I know. at all. That's nobody's the best like, part. Nobody's like, hey, man, don't make fun of people because they're older. Like, hey, man, don't make fun of her because she's... Because, you know, she's, she has to, she has look, just, no matter what, we're being assholes yeah, here. It doesn't matter. Like, I mean, right. <laughs> like, let's say let's let me just say we are not being nice. Yeah. That's part of the she, shtick. But guys. She, she did sound like she was offering her granddaughter pie during. That oh, my sk- God. You know what I mean? Like during that during that interview, she's like, have some pie. Her job is to have a voice. She's also and her voice. Yeah. Has aged. Maybe it's prematurely. I don't no, know. No, because she's she's 80 years old, which means when she got started in radio, her first conversation was with Marconi. <laughs> For Christ's sakes. She was she's reporting. not a young lady. This just in. The Pharaoh's heart has been hardened. Yeah. <laughs> like, really? <laughs> <laughs> we got a great, uh, These are great. set of images. Um, this is from Kernan, and uh, we're going to post... He sent these along, so I'm going to post them. If he gets mad at me and tells me to take them down, then I'll take them down. But Kernan sent uh, in a bunch of these. I'm going to post a couple of these. They're little despots. They're they're really great. And they're adorable. They're really great. So this is an interesting email. This is from Shane, and Shane's, Shane uh, had a couple of comments, but one of them, he's talking about the, the millions of illegal voters. Uh, he said a comedian had a bit, uh, and he can't remember exactly who, uh, when his mother was trying to shame him into eating his vegetables. He said there's starving children in Russia. His response was, oh, yeah, name three. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. And his that's response great. is, cool, name three illegal voters. Show me some evidence. Yeah, yeah it's so true. Great. It's like, yeah. and that's exactly it, right? The illegal voters we can point to voted for Trump, and they weren't illegal. Right. Well, they, they weren't. They weren't they illegal, weren't illegal aliens. aliens. They were just they voting were just, illegally. Yeah. Right. Big difference. 
we got a message from Chris and uh, and we ran into Chris uh, at QED and then we also ran into him after QED yes, at, we did. The, at the meetups. He came to the meetups, uh, one of the meetups anyway in Edinburgh, and he sent this message to us. It's a it's a message that he received with a video embedded, and it's Bible scholars unearth the lost teachings of Jesus, and it, it, this thing is basically saying this is how you cure all your diseases. Yeah, I, I love. That they sent it to Chris yeah. because Chris is blind. Yeah. <laughs> and I, Chris, let us know if it cured the blindness. <laughs> Literally any I of just it. Yeah. want to know because that dog is sweet and yeah. I'll take the dog. I'm just saying you won't need him anymore. I'm just. <laughs> that dog is sweet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Shout out to Jackson, y'all. <laughs> so uh, we got a message from Christina. When Christina sent some really great links too, by the way. I just want to say like. Christina like, emails us a lot. Yeah, she emails yeah. us a lot and she sent some really great stuff. And this one was uh, a a. A, a message to talk about a uh, NPR podcast called NPR Politics uh, Podcast. She was listening to it, and one of the things that she says is she says uh, it, it's so difficult because how in the world uh, how how in the world do we deal with smart people sounding interminably boring? And I think it's like you're arguing with a Vulcan. Yeah. Well, it, it it is it is. I I think it's a real challenge, and it's one we have to face up to. We you know, on the on the side of uh, evidence and rationality, we have to find a middle ground where, like you said, where there's some fire in what yeah. you say. You know, we, I, I don't think that there has to be a disconnect yeah. between being intellectually rigorous and being mad as hell. Yeah, I think you can be both. Well, and, and I think like, you know, clearly I don't want just a rhetorician, but I would like to have somebody who has the ability to use rhetoric as a tool when they're arguing. Can, can we get hitchback? I don't think so. Is that a thing? I, try CPR, Tom. If we <laughs> see if that works. <laughs> Five years after the fact, <laughs> you come up with his lips on <laughs> your lips. <laughs> Love you, bro. Not giving you a fucking kissy. No, uh, that's not happening. We got a message. Um, this is from Amrut, and uh, and this is I'm gonna post this video. Oh my god. Just watch Ted Cruz talk, and he's the most uninteresting person I've ever seen. He talks about queso dip, and he's trying to make a joke. He's desperately trying to make a joke about it. And it's terrible. It's seriously the worst thing I've ever seen. And he's looking around. The best part is he's looking around like, hey, guys, does everybody notice that I'm making a joke? And his fucking neck fat is actually (laughs) hanging over his shirt collar. And his soft, shitty face is looking around like, okay, so am I right? (laughs) And people are just staring at him like, is that subhuman attempting to use a humor device? It's funny because he has enough yes people around him that are chuckling. And I'm thinking none of this is funny funny this isn't funny no no it's not it's not it's, even and it's not even like it can't even be mistaken as funny and executed wrongly it it right it, it's funny in the way that like like a not particularly precocious six-year-old reads you a joke book yeah right yeah you know he's trying sure but he's stupid and his joke is boring. It's like it's like sitting next to a, like a five year old who just keeps making fart sounds and laughing. Yeah, right. Yeah. Like yeah. my pit, my pit. Yeah. and you're like, like oh, okay, that's great, great. All right, you're hilarious. Yeah. Have another Benadryl. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we got a message from Kyle, and Kyle sent oh an God. image, and um, oh I God. just I think I'm just gonna have to post this oh image. Um, let's just say it has both bullets <laughs> and a cross. I don't. This is, I can't. So we want to leave the show today. Next week, we're going to have a gentleman by the name of Scott Reeder on. Scott yes, is uh, launching a new podcast on NPR, and he was a journalist in uh, in the middle of our state and covered a very interesting case that they're going to be doing on NPR uh, in early January. We had a chance to talk to Scott for over an hour, uh, and we're going to post some of that conversation uh, either Thursday or next week. Uh, it was a very fascinating conversation, fascinating guy, a little different than what we normally do, um, because we really do. We're just talking to him about sort of his involvement in this case and then his involvement in the current podcast that he's producing with uh, NPR's help. So we're going to have him on, talk about it. It was just fascinating. Yeah, it was though. very interesting. Interesting guy. I think his show is going to be quite interesting. Again, it's a departure yeah. from what we would normally do. It's kind of a longer form interview that we yeah. had uh, done with him. Great guy, though. Yeah. Really interesting stuff. So looking yeah. forward to posting that. Yeah. So we're going to post that I mean, I'm looking forward to you posting Yeah, that. I know. I don't know how that works. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. Uh, <laughs> this show 
will be coming out before Christmas. So Merry Christmas. Drink Merry your Christmas. eggnog. See, so Merry Christmas. Drink your eggnog, Tom. No. Yes. N- oh, do it. No. no. Do it. Mm. Do shots with your kid. Oh, God. Does your kid like eggnog? I'll never find out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so uh, so we want to leave I would be you. less appalled if I he know. was like dad i'm gargling semen he'd be like dad i am a republican stop <laughs> stop that's my boy you're talking about that you can say a lot of things if he was he's, like, Dad, I'm gargling hobo semen, I'd be like, okay. Having a, he's having this this moment, this breakdown moment at the young Republican no, circle no. at college. I love that boy. Like, he's like, I'm a Republican. No. My dad doesn't accept it. No. No. <laughs> Stop it. Stop it. Dude, come on. You. I mean, that's a bridge too far. Oh, I mean, awesome. can't we make jokes about Chris's blindness again? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so uh so we're gonna leave you tyler sent in a very dramatic oh so dramatic overly dramatic very dramatic ridiculously dramatic <laughs> kind of embarrassingly dramatic <laughs> more embarrassing than the skeptic creed normally is That's, yeah okay yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's real bad. I know. That's the worst thing I've Actually, ever Actually, I really do have to comment, though. Tyler did a great job on this. I think it's really funny. It's really well done. Yeah. So um, it's better than this This poem deserves. So I, we're going to... God damn it, I'm right here. <laughs> God, you. right here. I'm your Differently friend. than we normally do. We're going to leave you with the dramatic <laughs> Skeptics Creed. Merry Christmas to all and to all a good night. Credulity is not a virtue. It's fortune cookie cutter mommy issue hypno Babylon bullshit. Couched in scientist and double bubble toil and trouble pseudo quasi alternative acupuncturing pressurized stereogram pyramidal free energy healing water down spiral brain dead pants sales pitch late night info docutainment. Leo Pisces cancer cures detox reflex foot massage death and towers tarot cards psychic healing crystal balls. Bigfoot, Yeti, aliens, churches, mosques, and synagogues, temples, dragons, giant worms, Atlantis, dolphins, truthers, birthers, witches, wizards, vaccine nuts, shaman healers, evangelists, conspiracy, double speak, stigmata, nonsense. Expose your sides. Thrust your hands. Bloody. Evidential. Conclusive. Doubt even this. The opinions and information provided on this podcast are intended for entertainment purposes only. All opinions are solely that of Glory Hole Studios, LLC. Cognitive dissonance makes no representations as to accuracy, completeness, currentness, suitability, or validity of any information and will not be liable for any errors, damages, or butthurt arising from consumption. All information is provided on an as-is basis. No refunds. Produced in association with the local Dairy Council and viewers like you. Cutting cutting everything short is the story of my life. I- well, <laughs> hold on. Being born short and having to <laughs> having to stretch out and well not even stretch out just apologize I hang for the shortness <laughs> is the story of my life. The al- problem with your weight hanging technique is that your your dick becomes so skinny that yeah. it's like there's not even it's just a really long straw. That you kind of <laughs> it's like a crazy straw. Look at that. Yeah. You're like I steal your milkshake. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> Uh, uh, that's amazing. Right. I was recording that, so if you put that in the end or something, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> what the straw? I always put the straw in the end. That's the advantage yeah, of having a straw. Is it, yeah. If it's yeah, true. Uh, if it's too Snow, big, nobody lets you put it in the end. Always got a felch. Oh god! Uh, when Jesus. you put it in the end, god damn it! With a straw, damn it! Yeah. I'm My milkshake brings all the boys. <laughs> 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 <All right. Blah. laughs>
The milkshake it's, is hairy. It's like <laughs> eggnog. Come on, it's the same thing. It's pretty much that eggnog. Your milkshake is hairy. Did you see? Did you see that Andrew uh, had posted like eggnog he fucking made three years ago on Facebook? Did you see that? Yeah. What the fuck is happening there? Oh, dude, that's so coincidental because like a few months ago, I had a friend who like he had a gathering at his house, and he's like, "Okay, we can finally drink the eggnog." from a year ago oh, or whatever. No. And I was like, what? No. And I tried it and it was fine. I mean, it was just well, tasted like Well, did it like age eggnog. properly? Like, did it do it? Well, here's what I, I want to understand. I don't know. It's got fucking eggs in it, man. And like, milk. I don't think that cream. shit. Yeah, I don't yeah. think that shit improves with age. I, I don't understand it. I it, well, But is it is there an ingredient that like neutralizes that somehow? Well, I don't alcohol know. I don't... kills bacteria and kills. Oh, that's probably right? what it is. But okay, so fine. Would that stop the milk from curdling though? Well, That's a good point. Does, doesn't know. the milk curdle is because it, it goes bad, and it goes bad because of bacteria? Because of bacteria, growth, maybe? Right? I I'm guess. Guessing. I don't know. Look, one way or the other, I had it. I had like a glass of it, and it was fine. Okay, <laughs> but, was it, so wait, 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 but it didn't wait, get better, wait, though. Wait, That's the thing. Fine? You guys was are the ones who are trying to get me to eat fucking duck asshole and like smells like warm dog uh, f- French food. Like that, was You it? guys are the ones You trying. are not comparing, <laughs> sir. Yeah. I'll get on an airplane yeah. right now. You are not comparing the foie gras we had that was fucking magnificent. In New York to uh, eggnog that on. somebody's had fucking sitting in their pantry for you're, a year. <laughs> you're an asshole. Are you, uh, are you seriously? <laughs> you're going to go there? <laughs> the fuck is wrong uh, with you? Oh, this is man. a man with a palate that has one color. No shit, like, right? it's like, 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 oh, it tastes like what? a sweet. That's right. good. Hey, you know, what, uh, you know what the eggnog didn't taste and smell exactly like? Dog. So, no, it was worse. It tasted like eggnog. Yeah, it tasted like fucking elf seed. <laughs> That's yeah. its, its own horrifying descriptor. It's like uh. it's like you pull a fucking river corpse out of the water, <laughs> and you fucking get a shaggy dog to roll in it. And it's like, what does that smell like? Well, it's not eggnog. Yeah, it, it, it's, it's still just a little better still than eggnog. Better. Yeah, I'd rather fucking smell a tire fire and burning human hair. <laughs> <laughs> Disgusting. <laughs>